Good afternoon, folks, and welcome to The Revealing. I am your host once again, Pavarotti, here to fill in some of the blanks on the Idaho 4 case for you. Uh, just as before, I'm not here to slander anybody. This is just my personal opinion based on the content that a lot of y'all have put out, being able to look it over and fill in the blanks. And I want to continue to fill in the blanks for you, as I'm sure I have your attention by now. Today we're going to discuss Mr. Brian Koberger, and my personal opinion is Mr. Koberger is a very interesting character in this scenario, and let's talk about him for just a moment. Now, anybody that's done any research on Mr. Koberger knows that he was a, a larger fella in high school, and then he got into some pretty good shape, went to college, went to college again to get a master's degree, and then was currently in college again working on a PhD. Now, it takes a very disciplined person to complete four years of a university education minimum to achieve a bachelor's degree, another two years of higher education minimum to receive their master's degree but Mr. Koberger was going beyond that he was going for his PhD and the subject that he was going for his PhD which by the way that's a doctorate so Mr. Koberger was on his way to becoming a, a doctor but if you look at his field of study there's certainly not a lot of use for it out there in the actual world. In fact, do a little research. What could somebody with that level of education in that subject do for a living? As far as I can ascertain, there's only two possibilities. One would be to possibly go into law enforcement in a in the FBI's behavioral sciences unit. You know, we've all seen the, you know, the criminal mind show. Now my opinion on that is that behavioral sciences unit for the FBI doesn't look like it, you know, really employs that many individuals. So getting into that unit would probably be a challenging thing to do. Now the other possible career path with that type of education in that particular subject would be a college professor. Other than that, it doesn't leave a lot to be able to, you know, aspire to. So that's a, that's a lot of years, a lot of dedication, and a lot of effort going into education to not have very many outcomes in it. And to go to school that long just to be a professor to teach the subject you know, doesn't doesn't sound doesn't sound very motivating for somebody to go through all that. Um, the other scenario would be to go through all that time in education would be to learn everything that somebody who is aspiring to be a potential gun for hire would possibly need to know. When you look at Mr. Koberger and his mannerisms, his appearance, it should remind you very quickly of just about every hitman character in the million of B movies or C movies that are put out these days. If you go on the Netflix and you pull up the synopsis for half of the movies that they're producing, it'll inevitably say half of them the scenario is a hitman does this a hitman does that and in pretty much all those cases that hitman does resemble somebody like Brian Koberger now with that type of knowledge he would be way ahead of the game as far as becoming a professional I mean that would really put him in a different category and if we look back into his past I would expect to see somebody like that 
veer off into some some disciplined activities, possibly some self-defense or offense subjects. And if you look at the pictures that you know have been put out there from him from high school, one of the things you're going to notice is he was he was a large guy. He was a big guy for a while, but then you'll see pictures of him in his ROTC training, you know, doing push-ups and exercising. He also started boxing, and that's what credited a lot of his weight loss. So that would be something I would expect somebody in that line of work to have studied. You know, boxing, martial arts, probably a lot of other things that haven't come out yet about him that would lend to the credibility of being a professional gun for hire. So looking at his mannerisms in the courtroom, he's pretty stone-faced. He doesn't go in there and talk to anybody, which I'm going to also explain why that is in, in a video coming up. It's very, very important for him not to open his mouth, I assure you. But looking at his potential personality, his past, his discipline, if I was going to paint the picture for a professional gun for hire, I mean, I couldn't write the book any better for Mr. Koberger. Now, how Mr. Koberger and the organization that paid him to do this connect, that I'm unsure of. But I'm pretty positive that they're connected. And they put the ball in motion and Mr. Koberger was handed the ball off and he scored the touchdown. Now, what happened after the fact was something that wasn't planned, I don't think, for him or the organization. I believe that he, he probably drove his car to the scene. He tried his best to avoid all of the cameras. I don't believe that he left a knife sheath there with any touch DNA on it. I think he was probably pretty tidy. In fact, if you notice, they, they couldn't get any DNA from Mr. Koberger while he was still in Idaho. And he was on their radar and they really wanted that DNA from Mr. Koberger. So you can imagine that they surveilled his apartment where he was, any trash that he put out, they took it and they tested everything they could and they couldn't come up with anything. And we know that because when he left there and went to Pennsylvania with his father, they followed him to his father's house and they got all the trash from his father's house and they went through everything they could and they still couldn't get any of the DNA from Mr. Koberger. Why is that? Well, because this guy is a true professional. When they raided the house, they found that his trash he didn't put in trash. He, he put it in little plastic baggies and disposed of it elsewhere, just like he was probably doing in Idaho. That's why they couldn't find his DNA. That's why they had to use his father's DNA to be able to identify him. Now, they obviously figured out who it was. They know why it was him. The, the police know. It's, it's not a random psychopath on a mission to harm random people. They said it was a targeted attack almost immediately when the investigation began. And they knew it was a targeted attack because they already had the information about the girl's parents and the evidence that they were turning over. And they knew this was a message that was being sent to them. So they were looking for the assailant under the already known fact that he was a hitman he was paid, and they just need to figure out who he was. They did that from the videos of his car, and more than likely the evidence was planted on the knife sheath once they obtained his DNA, and they matched it up that way. They, they don't have to go through all the normal measures. They have an idea 
what happened, who did it, and if they can put it to bed with this gentleman and not bring up other aspects of the investigation, it's just better for them and everybody else. So that's where we're at in the investigation. Now in the next video, I'm going to bring up another scenario that's going to really tie this thing together and make your jaws drop to the ground.